Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your girl, Zenio Rain, bringing my throwback knowledge to the game. And this video is way long overdue, okay? This is the story behind banging in Little Rock, okay? And I felt the need to do this story now because it seems like this video is starting to trend again based off of me reading the comments of this clip from OG Percy interviews on the Diamond Stone TV is starting to bring people <laughs> to this video, banging in Little Rock. Okay, so this documentary came out in 1993, 1994-ish, and it was basically about, you know, gang violence and the high um, climb of gang-related activities, okay? Um, yeah, before we get started in this documentary, I just want to let you guys know that I will be doing more Where Are They Nows and updating everyone on any kind of content that I find from the Facebook page, okay? That is where it is really popping. That is where um, I'll be reviewing the content from the Facebook page, okay? Because I uploaded a clip of this documentary on the Facebook page in the beginning of 2017, around the time when I first started the DTB Classics Facebook page, and the clips I was posting was going viral, okay? So the only reason why I posted this full documentary is because people was wanting to see it. People was... um. It was in demand because this was, was uh, one of the first videos that actually went viral on the Facebook page that has over 237,000 followers. So y'all go and follow that page, like it, etc. So we're going to dive into this where are they now about this documentary. Also, you know, YouTube flagged the channel. Um, it got demonetized because this documentary is not my documentary, you know, so I have to, you know, um, update, update the people on what's going on by using my voice, etc. But, you know, that's another story. So before we get into the commentary on this documentary, it is a handful of the people in this documentary um, that I interacted with through the Facebook page and had, um, personal conversations with. So I'm going to be updating you, um, to the best of my ability. Now, when this documentary came out in 1993, 1994 ish, it was like the first of its kind, you know, these videos from my VHS, VHS collection, these videos was like viral before viral was viral. It was trending before trending was trending because when this, um, documentary, um, came out in the early nineties, like everybody was talking about it. Everybody was watching it. It actually intrigued the kids to want to be in the gang even more. So I feel like they thought they would, they was doing something by promoting the downside and the violence um, in this video, but it just made people want to learn the game. I mean, as, as far as me as a kid, I remember watching this. I had brothers. We was little. I was like, you know, a kid when this came out. We want to learn the gang signs. You know, we want to, you know, try to claim something. We didn't know what the hell we was doing or what we was talking about. So in no means am I trying to act like I'm a real original gangster out here, you know, not in that aspect, but you know, I'm just saying, um, <laughs> back then this was unheard of. This is when HBO was in its prime. This is when HBO had some real life gutter documentaries. Um, HBO has some real documentaries on here, you know, so people was tuned in. It was a lot, even a lot of rappers was talking about this documentary, you know, um, back then. I think Outkast mentioned this documentary on the Elevators album. You know, whatever was hot when this documentary came out, 
you know, it was being included in those things. So it, it's very interesting to see um, because it was a second one came out like 10 years later. I, I didn't post clips of the second one um, on the Facebook page, but I do have it on VHS. And I feel like a lot of the new generation, they didn't even know this existed because it is intriguing. You see people fighting on here. You see people getting, you see bodies, dead bodies. You see dang people getting their arms shot off and all kinds of stuff, you know. And TV back then, this was unheard of, you know. But I'm saying... I feel like they even wanted to make this documentary because gang violence was starting to increase in those wholesome towns like Little Rock, Arkansas. You know, I feel like in my personal opinion and based off of um, the comments that the people in this documentary were saying on the Facebook page, I feel like, you know, the white community was starting to get scared, you know, and this is why, you know, I feel like HBO pounced on the opportunity to go in the hood in Little Rock and try to um, get this on TV to, because the white folks were starting to get scared. I ain't even gonna lie, I mean, they, they, they gave these people false promises going up in there and it always rubbed me the wrong way when I was watching it as a kid but that we're gonna get more into that later on in the video um hold on like this part right here in the documentary I mean even in a little town it's uh crime spreading all over it's getting to be in certain parts of the city I won't be racist or anything about whether it's white part or black part okay so what was that about I won't be racist or anything or say white part, black part. Come on, this is this is why they opening up this documentary showing this. Going to, uh, it like, I don't know, a gun convention uh, in, the, um, in the backwoods somewhere, you know, talking to, you know, the white community first because they, they wasn't used to all of this, the rise of gang activity. So I feel like this was like the foundation for why they even started this documentaries because they were starting to get worried. But it's getting to be nearly as bad here as it was what we moved away from. That's why we moved back out to the country. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to update you guys on any other information that I found via the Facebook page? Hold on, let's see. Well, if we, we in Little B, Arkansas, ain't shit gonna happen in Arkansas with bullshit. It's come up. Anywhere you go, you see it now. Take you down the hoods in Little Rock, take you down the hoods in North Little Rock. It look like Chicago. Look like, man, it's just as hard up here as it is anywhere. So, yeah, they started... <laughs> They start with the, the white gangs first, right? Man, me and my um brothers used to crack up watching this. Just because you're a girl don't make you shoot a dog in This This is why they even made this documentary because the white kids were starting to get in gangs, man. Their parents was getting scared, like, oh no, it's something we gotta do about this, man. Man. <laughs> Shit. Ain't like a white boy can't be hard. A black dude can be soft. Shit. I mean, <laughs> to die. Like, dude, oh, white boy. <gasps> you would believe having a white kid. See, it's, it's more difficult to, to get their parents to believe it because they say, oh, that couldn't happen to my kid. You know, that's affecting the black community. It's not See, that's what I'm talking about. At first, the families of the white community that was in the games was like, oh, sh oh, well, who cares? Who cares that they're in the hood killing each other? It's not affecting my kids, but it's like, hold on, newsflash, now your kids are in gangs. Oh, now it's an uproar. Now they want to go in the community and try to quote unquote help everyone, but we're going to get more into it. You used to be my homie. You used to be my hate. 
<laughs> okay. So this is one of the clips uh, that I posted on the Facebook page. So I'm just go down the timeline. I'm going to start with this clip. I'm going to play it from the Facebook page. <laughs> now I want to smack the taste out your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> It's funny because if you watch this documentary, I'm going to have to delete it after I do this. But they was always bumping the Chronic, though. But you got to think back then, that's when the Chronic was the hottest album ever. I mean, you go to any hood, people is bumping the Chronic. And that's one reason I got closest because I want his family. Then I know it's going to be with me no matter what I do. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, watching it now as an adult, or if you might not have remembered this documentary when it came out, it's it looked like the stereotypical music that gang members would want to listen to, right? That, uh, the kind of nothing but a G thing, thing, thing. No, but that was just the culture back then. That's what everybody was listening to. We was all listening to the chronic. Now, in this clip, you know, she pretty much get her ass whipped. She get jumped in or whatever. And quote it. <laughs> These little like definitions that they used to put throughout this whole doc documentary was a little extra as well. Very damn extra. Like, wow. So yeah, this is why this this documentary was was lit like back then, because dang, she get her ass whipped. She want to be a G. So I don't even know, based off of the comments over here, someone made a joke. I don't know if it was real, a joke or real, because, you know, a lot of the people in this documentary and from Little Rock was in these comments. And we're going to get more in detail um, later in the video. I think this girl right here in the documentary, I think she's an accountant today. If not, that was just a joke somebody said to try to be funny. I'm not sure. I didn't really, I didn't talk to this, to this chick or anybody in the documentary from the um, white neighborhood. Get love. Gang term for intense loyalty and affection. Come on. They can't be serious. So the viewers needed a definition of what get love meant. Really? They being they doing too much. See, that's how you know this is targeted not to um people in gangs. I feel like this is targeted to people who were scared of the gangs and the people in the Little Rock, Arkansas community, the higher ups. It was targeted towards them so they'll know and be um, aware of what's going on in the terms and the terminology of the gang slang. I got beat in. And why did you see it beating and not sex? Okay, so I found this clip um, on the corner. Steve, nah, JC, well, however you say his name, on his YouTube of the girl who I just showed. And this was in 
2010. So this was about 10 years ago. So yeah, I got out. Yeah, I, it's always going to be a part of me, a part of my past, I guess, you know, something that I think back on and and I believe that this has affected me and will for the rest of my life, mainly, of course, because it was on television. So I found this clip. I'm not going to play it all because I don't want YouTube to get me, but I might link it in the comments if you want to watch the full video. But I found it interesting. This is the corner guy saying, the last I knew, she did still have the brand. She's a completely different person now. And I thought her interview was so powerful. I use it when I do my training lectures. KK was actually the blood blonde boy. The young, sorry, the young blonde boy who went to prison for ATM robbery which I'm about to update y'all on him here soon. Um, he's now a responsible business owner making a lot of money legally. I lost track with some of the others. I'm not sure where they are now. I know that Trig is doing well. Thanks for your very kind comments. I was waiting for this comment. Somebody said, I wonder if you can say the same for any of the black kids. <laughs> That's some racist stuff to say. Where's everyone now since it's 2020? <laughs> Someone said that just a few months ago. So this corner guy, Steve, I just looked him up. He actually co-produced the second one. Um, and I'm going to get more into detail about that. But it looks like that he just got diagnosed with cancer a few months back. So this is him today, the corner guy. And I think he's still doing stuff in the community. And I guess he's considered like, you know, a community savior, OG, et cetera, et cetera. Get up, get up, get up. Like that. Boom. Now you want to let him know. Like, yeah, that's a good day to come in. Bam. Love you, love I'm hoping to hook up with some more straps because the stuff we're all in right now is all right, but I want to look for a little bit more discreet, more powerful method. So I'm looking at this 9mm with the government issue, 9mm with the silencer. And where are you going to get the money for it? Uh, I'll probably go jacking, jacking cars, jacking <laughs> people, whatever it takes to get the money. I want him to know that I'll be there for him, but he's going to have to decide who his family is. Yes, Your Honor, our main concern was to, to get Justin out of jail this time, and the state's going to recommend a 30 battle law bond to cover all charges. That would be sufficient. He's been gone for months. They actually had parents who cared about them and their well being. Yeah, so somebody put in the comments that KK, this boy, I feel like he's the worst off out of the whole cast for what they're doing as far as the ones that's alive. Because this dude, he's a sex offender now. It says produce, direct, promote, sexual, perform, perform. Sexual performance by a child, pictures showing sexual performance by a child, by a minor. Oh, wow. Yeah, this dude is, uh, is, yeah, he messed up for life. <laughs> so somebody in the comments put Clarence, is that you, Keith Gilfeather? 
Was that Big C? I clicked on this profile. I'm like, man, this kind of looked like old boy. I don't know. I don't know for sure because he didn't comment and he didn't say anything. But that might be one of the white gang members today. He looked like he on some pimping shit. And just grown and minding his dang business today. That's the okay, this is the uh, Center Street entrance to the governor's mansion, which is state-provided housing for the governor. And this is where President Clinton uh, lived when he was running for office. He lived several years prior to being elected president. And this is also... This area right here is kind of in the middle of the, what we call the, the war zone. Bloods are on to the east of here, and the Crips are on to the west of here. And at night, you can hear uh, gunshots down in this neighborhood real frequently, almost every night, especially on quiet, still nights. That is exactly what I'm talking about. That is why they started this documentary. Because you just said this is president president uh president used to live there um governors is involved like you know like i was saying the higher ups is involved because this is where they came up so this is what really inspired this documentary they really didn't care what was going on in the hood with the black folks for real <laughs> One day we was chilling on the street called 23rd. We all grew up together. We all crip, right? All our homies came down here, like from California, anywhere. They came down here and got with us. They joined with us. You know? And everybody just turned crip. I believe the gang scene first started in Little Rock for money. You can get a half ounce in LA for about 500. Out here, you can sell it for a thousand. You make a motherfucking money, cuz. <laughs> I came in Little Rock in '87. It was like if Clint Eastwood would have came out here, they would just want to be like Dirty Harry. You know, so I was just something new to them, and they gave me that much more respect. They gave, they wanted to be like me. Alright, I'm Yashiku. I'm a girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? And what I feel about him, he's straight. I guess. Nah, I'm not most bitch. I'm most hell, you know what I'm saying? Keep that on camera too. We got much love. Now that girl, she was actually on this clip on Facebook. Somebody had found her. Let me see. So yeah, right here on the Facebook, someone said, whatever happened to that guy, Mo, that came from Cali and started Wolf Street Crips? Oh, and that girl that said, I am Mo's bitch, I'm Mo's girlfriend. I never forgot that part of the film. I think her name was Yashika. So somebody actually found Yashika. Yeah, Yashika's still around. I used to live in LR, Little Rock, and worked at Harvest Foods on 17th in Maine. I met Mo in the store and always wondered whatever happened to her. Glad to know she made it out. Yeah, she do hair at the Mark Plaza Mall. She a lady now. Good job. Here she go. Young Rashida, Yashika Young, right? I never met her, just remember her from that. I meant the guy she was dating back then and always wondered about her and the other girl that was with her. So this is Yashika now, who was just in that clip. Another picture of her today. Someone said... La Portia. Story of my life. I grew up in that corner. 14th Lewis. West 14th. My mom was in the documentary. The memories behind this. R.P. Sunny Boy. I'm going to talk about Sunny Boy later on.
And people says, dang, man, this bring back too many memories growing up in the dub, Southwest Little Rock, 65th and Butler. Thank God we made it out. We lost so many young brothers over senseless bullshit. Thank God for the ones that made it out and salute the ones that didn't and salute Daily Throwback Classics. Like this is a real little town. So it's like everybody knew each other or went to school with each other. Someone says, Joy Walton says, I was nine when they was banging like this. My grandparents, my grandparents stayed like five houses down from where the girls was dancing. That's the 17th Projects. Mo. How did I meet him? I was walking down the street and shit, and he stopped me and started talking to me. And we just hooked up like that, you know? I was going to school and shit. I wasn't fucked up about gang banging. I didn't know nothing about gang banging. He was gang banging and what they was doing looked fun to me. You know what I'm saying? They was cripping and shit and they had cars and money and this and that and they was out on their own, you know? So shit, I wanted to do that kind of shit. So I got into winning and got out on my own and started hustling and now I got everything I want and shit. You say you got everything you want. What is that? What do you have? Everything. What's everything? I got a house. I got three cars. I got money in my pocket. Everything I want. But you, how old are you? 17. I feel like I'm too hard to die, man. I feel like I can't see faded, you know? I feel like can't no nigga fade me. I feel like I'm the hardest nigga walk the earth and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, Bobby Banks today, from what I've seen, he's doing 55 years. Let me pull up this comment right here. Yeah, someone said, he been locked up since um, 2006. So that was after the second documentary came out. So he's doing 50, a 55 year sentence for multiple offenses, including drug trafficking. So yeah, somebody saying, yeah, I ain't seen him since 2005. So that's crazy. Back then, you know, he he felt like he was the hardest nigga walking the earth. So now he doing fifty five years. It all caught up to him. I think I was about nine. See, here, here's when it starts to get interesting because I really, I seriously don't even like how they going over there and they talking to these little kids. We're going to get into that here shortly about why I don't like how they was really I'm talking to the kids that small too. Somewhere around nine. At first I had a gauge. I couldn't shoot the gauge. Too big. They gave, I think Kato gave me a nine. But it was too big. So I think it was Ray Rap. Ray would hold my hands up. He let me aim it, point it at whoever I wanted to get. And he just hold my hand and let me get busy. And just told me to pull the trigger when I'm ready. And I just I could really did. Just pull the trigger. You were nine years old and you were telling people, how did you feel about that as a nine year old boy? At that time I have I ain't know no better. I had no remorse. I thought that was a thing to do. When everybody telling me that's a thing to do. Yeah, what you win, right. What's the win? And the only way you get out is you die up. If you can't, die, if you don't die out, you're not out. You can't, because most of the, most of the uh, crips is in, they get in the set, they That's get their they, they they set branded on them. You know what I'm saying? Life, but life, life, you know what I'm saying? Life. They can't get out, they got to die out. Four three crips. 23rd. When did, you do, when did you do that? About two hours ago. And how does it feel? Three straight crips. I didn't see a can of the 
it don't hurt, you know. You drink, a, you drink a forty, you know. You straight, you bud and shit, you straight. You could say that forty said smoke a twenty say. And why did you, why did you put that there? Cause I'm down for mine. This motherfucking family, Wood Street, twenty third. I'm down for mine. Wood Street Crip, twenty third for life. <laughs> Here we go. Welcome to the ghetto. So this is the part of the documentary when the the HBO cast go to the hood. To the blood side. First they went on the crib side. This is the blood side. Me. Is, you know, there's a group of fellas that's going to stay together, look out for each other and all that. You know, in case another thing comes, we know how to deal with it. You know, it's, it's people you're looking out for. You know, just like <laughs> crips, they can come through here and start stuff. But we just be sitting out like we're doing now, chilling. And all this driving through and all this throwing up signs, that's something I feel ain't called for. That's disrespecting our territory. And then what happens when something like that happens? Well, it depends on how they disrespect us. If they disrespect us like coming through shooting, then it's only one way we got to disrespect them. We got to go back and shoot at them. This one of the guns right here that I took from the crips. This is 22 automatic. And as you see, I ain't got the clip in my gun when I keep it in the house. But uh, if it come down to trouble with me, then, you know, I have to throw the clip in and go and do what I got to do. So I'm going to take care of business regardless. Being down with a click and everything, it's, it's just good, you know. I thought I'd get mad at first. I was like, what? Working these restaurants and all this, making minimum wage, folks can't buy anything and nothing. And so, you know, I figured at least I, uh, I'm with all my boys, you know what I'm saying? We gotta love each other. We're gonna make our money, we're gonna kick it and have fun and whatnot, you know. I ain't thinking about getting out right now. You say you make money. How do you make money and how much money do you make? You know, the way everybody else do. Dope. You know, I mean it's everywhere, you can't escape it. So I mean I just well, do my little thing, you know. Oh, probably have yeah, like an hour, we probably pull like four four hundred or something. <laughs> okay, so this is the part in the documentary where I posted this posted the clip on Facebook. This is one of the first clips that went viral on the DTP Classics page. So I'm gonna go into detail about this clip. <laughs> <laughs> playing the chronic again <laughs> it's like the chronic is the is the theme it's the soundtrack for this documentary for real because it was popping when it came out Somebody being jacked up, you know, they shot a harass him or something, you know what I'm saying? I'm just chilling up at an abandoned house. We next got the black man, Preston, first name Elvis. <laughs> Elvis, 1977. No, it ain't nothing new in this neighborhood. Ain't nothing new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they may not have, they may not have. It don't matter what color these individuals carry. No 
don't matter whether they have a blue ray or a red ray. It doesn't matter. They all bleed red. Yes. See, and they Everybody all got the mama. That's right. That's right. So, you know, I want you to work me out the job. I'm tired. I know this stuff's changing. You know, I'm just tired of seeing young dads beat it. You know, and, and, and you all give them one another. You know, that's something. That's something. And you can help do that. You know, I know you got juice. You can get all these other things. There's something we got to do that's positive. And it don't make no difference whether it's crap, blood, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's young, dead, black children. You can do that. I got a best friend up in the world. If I can talk with him, I believe he gets on his pocket. Why don't you try that? Some way you can do that. That's the clip that I had posted first on the Facebook page. And a lot of people from the clip was commenting and was in the comments. The girls in these videos, let me break down what's going on with them today. Yeah, so the reason I even posted the full documentary on YouTube was just so the people from Facebook can see the full documentary who was asking for it. But I am about to delete it now. So this is a comment from LaJoy Person right here on Facebook. She's the girl who's in this green shirt right here in this clip. Okay, and she said, those are my girls. It's all love. I'm in tears looking at the ones who was on the video dead today. HBO still owe me some racks. LOL. I love my hood. I love my friends. Don't look at me and don't ask me why mama next door getting high, even though she got five miles to feed. She rather spend her money on a hit. I always tell the truth about things like this. I wonder if the mayor overlooked that list. Instead, he should have added to the task force to send some help. Waiting on him, I better help myself. Housing Authority and OPD, all these guns just to handle me in the ghetto. Don't have enough to eat. Don't even have shoes on their feet too short so she tagged a whole bunch of other people <laughs> that's uh within this clip that's from Lil uh, that's from um Lil Rock so she tagged all her people in here she spit some bars you know a lot of these people that was in this documentary or from the hood uh, yeah I think this is the girl right here in the um uh, purple shirt in the clip if I'm not mistaken. Hold on a second. So, yeah, she she commented and brought the whole dang Lil Rock hood out in the comments. Because this video, I do got a million views on Facebook. So, I'm going to go through these comments. So, she said, "Miss, I miss Sonny Boy. I miss my big brother there. He was our big bro. He was a special person. So Sunny Boy was the one in the red. So she said, what's so coincidental is that before I looked at Facebook tonight, I was looking at my deceased brother's picture. He was murdered at 19. Looking at the picture of my car, I was going to post his pic on my page tonight of RIP. But my tablet would not take a pic because storage full. So I just opened up Facebook and seen you tag me in the scene where they was looking at dead bodies in the photo album on the documentary was how I got on banging in Little Rock because my 19 year old big brother was in that photo album. We was at the center called Hoover, a youth program on 12th street. When my little brother came up the steps running could barely breathe and said, this man around the corner has a picture of our brother's dead body. So me and my sister and the other girls went running around the corner to see um, if we could see my big brother again. That's how it all began with HBO. So in the documentary, when the corner going in the different neighborhoods or whatever, 
That is why these girls got in the clip because I feel like they was preying on these people, on these kids, on these young people in the hood, trying to get them to talk on whatever they could talk on. But we're going to get more into that in these dang comments. So that's me saying I edited a few clips of the documentary. Okay. She said, thank you. And boy, do we have a story to tell? Hold on. Let me read what I put. I had edited a few clips of the documentary. I had this taped on VHS when it first aired on TV. Something told me to post this clip today. Good to see people from the video commenting and getting a chance to tell their story during these days of social media. Didn't have Facebook back then. Peace and blessings. So the LaJoy girl, she says, thank you. And boy, do we have a story to tell? Well, I know I do. That man said he was going to pay us, that we was going to be superstars. I was trying to make my mama happy and pay uh, and pay all her bills bills with that movie, but he didn't give us nothing but a ride up the street. I said, "Oh my God, this changes everything about this documentary." <laughs> like, hold up, man. So they went in the so they went in the hood and they was telling these kids that they're gonna be big, they're gonna be big stars, this and that, this and that. But all they got was a dang ride, man, to pretty much put themselves out there like that. And he said, she said, then he got scared and said, this is as far as I can go. I don't know this neighborhood like that. <laughs> Y'all have to walk the rest of the way. We walked everywhere back then anyway. So we hopped out his van like it was nothing. Um, Back to Deuce 5. I told everybody at my junior high school I was going to be famous and make a lot of money, but he made a lot of money. That shit, that made me mad. I said, fuck that. I said, y'all need a check. Fuck that. <laughs> Excuse my language. She said, fucking right. Royalties and all. He came down there, bought a couple pieces for some kids and hit a lick. <laughs> And I feel right in some fried chicken. Yeah, that'll bait us in. Yeah, I said that's what I thought when um when I used to watch this as a kid, man. That scene when he brought the fried chicken, it was real low key. But it never sat right with me when I was watching this documentary, even as a kid, that he came with the bucket of fried chicken. I'm about to show that right now. Okay, yeah, here he come with the fried chicken today. Man, when this came out, I, I don't know. That just rubbed me the wrong way, even as a kid. Like, why he got fried chicken? Like, you know, black folks is not going to turn down no dang fried chicken, man. But, hey. Okay, yeah, here he come walking up in there with all these pizzas. Like she said. Of course, of course, niggas in the hood going to be slamming on some pizza and some free food.
one of those just a split second and the person's no longer with us. I mean, just over, just like that. It's crazy. So imagine how these kids feel. And so right now, what's working in them is anger. I mean, you know, and these older guys are trying to keep them in check, but they're not out of their hoods. I mean, you know, this is people coming into their neighborhood, and this is a city. I mean, we, should, we ought to be able to go everywhere we, you know, want to go. But I don't know. Makes my heart go a thousand miles an hour. So imagine how these kids feel. I mean, ducking every car that goes by. It's crazy. It's getting too close to the white community. And I'm glad that we can come together because crisis seems to be the only thing that brings us to the table. I have a little bit better perspective on drive-by shootings now because yesterday I was standing on a street corner with a group of kids and another group of kids drove by in a car and shots were exchanged. And I was in the middle of it. So I have a whole new perspective. <laughs> and, uh... So I want to know, did they call this emergency meeting because the camera crew was there and the coroner almost got shot or could have got shot? Is that why they call an emergency re uh, meeting all of a sudden? But I think I just think it's interesting, though, because I didn't realize until now that Bill Clinton was president when this documentary was being made. And Bill Clinton is from Arkansas. So I feel like um, politically. That is what attracted stations like HBO to this town in the first place. So someone says, dang, LaJoy, that's some crazy shit about the pics. Like, dang. She said, yeah, it really was Wayne Edwards. We kids looking at all those dead bodies. I mean, people were scavenging to see their loved one or friend. That's how many dead people was in his book. As a kid, you stop flipping pages and seeing, you stop flipping pages. I seen too many dead teenagers, young adults before I could find my big brother's pick. What the fuck was he thinking? Someone said, he said, he kind of looked like he was in a documentary too. Yeah, Daily Throwback Classic. The white man got us again, shaking my dang head. Like the movie Higher Learning at the end. It said, lesson unlearned. That's that what niggas see all the time. He stereotyped us and manipulated us. Someone said, is he dead? So, <laughs> I don't know. He eating good, though, wherever he is. On my mama, he is. Someone said, I said, we get a camera and you and get you and the others together to film story behind Banging and Little Rock. Someone said, now, that was 100. See, all these people on Little Rock on the comments uh, talking about this. Someone said, I promise you, I promise you not all the people who were featured in this film were gangsters. And if they were, we need to film where are they now? And I promise you the ones who talk negative about the impact LR had, Little Rock had on the youth will be blown away because I know for a fact that some now advocates for youth Coaches, teachers, nurses, postal workers, just to name a few. And these are definitely not careers a game banger would choose. So this film just shows a bunch of kids being kids and representing what they knew at that time, period. I love it, especially seeing people then versus who they are now. Priceless. LaJoy says, won't they be shocked? I was a basketball coach for 15 years. Coach AAU boys drove them to California and back. No other parent but me. No help. I did it for at-risk kids and to save my own kids. I was the first female football coach in a 
IYFL for West Side Steelers. I coached baseball and softball too. Substitute teacher since 2004. Taught Pulaski Heights drill team some moves. I was on the Promise Neighborhood Board with Senator Joyce Ellett and Board of Directors Ken Richardson. I have housed lots of kids. Go to their hold on, go to their classrooms and conferences to help make them a better help make them better than me. That was my whole angle. Be better than me. I have associate in computer drafting and design, associate of art and science. I can go on and on. I just try to show love and give it. As long as you trying, I got you. She tagged another girl that's in the film, but I think she's not online right now. I deactivated her account. So the fine girl, that's the girl, LaJoy's sister. I think she's been a postal worker for the last 18 years. Love you, Karma Latte. And you are so strong too. God has strengthened you and us through our strife. We are truly blessed in Jesus' name. Man gave, man, God gave me so many strengths, gifts, talents, and power. I didn't know how to use them all or which to focus on. I wish to focus on more. I just knew to raise my kids right. Whatever jumped in my lane, I used my blessings of life to tackle it the proper way. So I did. So I know I did my best of what either I felt by heart said or instantly knew what was right to do. So me nor my children would be doubling back, trying to see the spot where missed, where we messed up. I'm sorry, y'all. And when you mess up, correct it. It can't be corrected. Repent. Move on. Nobody's perfect. Don't regret nothing. Learn from it. You learn what to do and what not to do again. You teach what to do and teach what not to do or do again. Anyone because it's called love. And thanks, Andrea, Miss Jazz with it. And Finister Parker, about nice comment for my sister. Yeah, she the bomb diggity, <laughs> no doubt. Someone said they was doing, they was hitting the quine before the quine. <laughs> she said, yeah, it should have been called the joy, LOL. I made that dance up at the center and I be looking at the little things people don't see and like when my, um, when my sister and Shan Hit that leg up, turn so smooth on sequence and on time, just like we practice. I'm like, hell yeah, hit that shit, my niggas. <laughs> Someone said, I thought that was you. I've watched a documentary a few times. I never noticed that you were right in the midst of all that was going on. Despite what you've been through, you were and where you came from. You are still here, and that's a blessing. Thank you, yes, Lord, kept me. That's a lot. <laughs> Ooh, it's a lot, y'all. Yes, the Lord kept me because of what all I've been through and little I text about is not even a half. I had a stepdaddy trying to rape me in some more stuff. The Lord kept me smiling. Through it all, prophets have always told me I'm anointed and that I have a special gift for working with and understanding children. That you know, y'all calling. And these people never met me in a day, a day in their life. I've been told that since I was 19 years old, but through all the crap I went through, you would think my face would be ran down. I haven't turned to drugs or killed myself. My teeth still white and pretty. Man, God is so good. He blessed me to age gracefully through his good grace and mercy. Yes, I have a lot of testimonies. And someone said, Little Rock, dang, I love my city, man. As kids, I watch how things was back in the day. And yes, shit was wild. But as years went by, 
shit went sour due to the youth. I still know my city from the bottom to the top. Been here since birth, but I'm also praying for my city for a better chance. No one will ever, no one will never understand Little Rock till you lived in Little Rock for a while. So it says many of the parents were locked up on drugs, deceased somewhere at work while this was being filmed. Those were crazy times in the neighborhood. We survived. So the, someone say from Little Rock that said this was a setup. They was able to put faces with names after this. 24 from Lewis. Someone else from Little Rock, Arkansas says, to be real, it was a setup. That's my hood. But they said they were filming. A lot of us said, hell nah. Hold on. They said what? But when they said they were filming a lot of us, I guess he meant to say, we said hell nah, but the ones who you saw ended up in jail right after filming. <laughs> So LaJoy also says, now what I wanted was an ignorant check. I was very smart. I was a kid who wasn't taught about contracts yet. I was in Algebra 1. We was barely over 12 years old. Minors, whom he never got our parents' permission, I might add. I knew my mom was sad of my brother's death, so I just wanted to take care of her. That wasn't everyone's um, thought. But it sure was mine. Hell, I thought as a kid, it was going to say such and such role was acted by a LaJoy, LaJoy person. Check, please. Okay, so it's a lot of comments on here. I said, it's never too late to get what you're owed. If you have any ideas, plugs, or info, please let me know. Because long as it's uh, as it's running, he getting paid, and he need to run that check back. I'm not selfish. A little cut, you some bread. Okay. So she says, my girl's on it, and plus, he got to pay. We were minors. My mom got a call from Luther Armstrong over Thrasher Boys and Girls Club back in the day. Oh. <sighs> Okay, it's typos. <laughs> he said he had our attorney to sue HBO, but my mom was on strong meds from having a nervous breakdown and my dad was in the feds. It was too stressful to deal with my mom because she was dealing with my brother's death. So nothing was ever done because she was my only guardian. She, <laughs> It's a lot. She said, I ain't gonna lie. I was mama. Uh, I was mama's please. Whatever that. Let's get this money. He promised us. Me and my sister was sad and disappointed. We didn't get paid. Hell, how you think we said we hard at the same dang time? He told us he was gonna pay us to act hard on camera. So we huddled up. Thought about what we was gonna say. And said, let Tasha talk shit, because she was good at it, LOL. Then we was going to say, all. Oh, then we going to all say we hard. <laughs> let me play that part back. said that's why they all said that at the same time because it was rehearsed and she said it was fun to us everybody was out kicking it it was a car show it was going down as a kid our eyes was big i said wow they really took advantage they were trying to save and looking like they was trying to save lives but they was really taking advantage she said, all my people and people people in this motherfucker, they used to go live back then. Hell, that's why we moved to the country when I was eight and ran into the same shit. And motherfucker couldn't even wear your hat the wrong way 
without getting your cap peeled back. So the LaJoy girl, she says, I remember when it came out on HBO, me and my sister was scared to go home because we didn't tell mama nothing about it because we didn't get no money and we thought she was going to beat our ass. See, my mama did not play. She gave us real ass whoopings like on Roots. Ooh, shit. Damn. For real, we was like, we good. It came on HBO and we did not have cable. So we was like, yes, high five. <laughs> we grew up in the uh, Bootsy. Mama, we thugging outside. We don't need cable. <laughs> She said, we, we, we thugging outside. We don't need cable. So we chilling at the crib when her extra ass reached to us, railroad working. Hold on. Let me read this. Okay. When her extra ass reached to us, railroad working boyfriend who did have cable came over with a VCR tape that he recorded it off of HBO because he, because his Richie, rich ass got all the gigits, gadgets and gadgets <laughs> at his house. He was mad and barred over with the tape. Bar he was mad and barged over with the tape, telling my mama to look at your girls. Man, me and my sister was shitting bricks. Enough to build a house because that's where we was going to have to go after she beat our butts. But through the grace of God, Lord have mercy. I thank him to this day. My mama did not beat us. She said they was just some kids having fun. No big deal. I'm so glad she know her kids because that's all we was doing. Having fun. R.I.P. Mom. Love you. Someone from Little Rock said, it's not all about contracts. I'm not sure if y'all sign a release form, which you are supposed to do before having your image on film that makes money. And if you sign a contract, then you can get money. She said, how a minor going to sign contracts? I had the green on. <laughs> so you can't at this point that's why he didn't pay y'all. He knew that. Motherfuckers be making money off us for years. You writing a book or script as we speak because that mama cable part made me laugh like a mug. So she says, yeah. I remember I was in the sixth grade elementary when my big bro came through to pick me up in a car. My mom bought him out of her disability <laughs> uh, back paycheck for seizures as a graduation gift to him we were so happy for him we had nothing but speakers in our hatchback he was bumping fly having dishwash maybe spelling talent wrong yeah i'm like i'm trying to read this it's kind of hard y'all my bad <laughs> he was bumping scarface the ghetto boys you i made a dance routine to that joint Cause it was banging. My bro was living with his dad in Southwest Little Rock, then coming to visit his siblings and mother in a blood hood. They didn't know him, and I swear, as soon as we got to the stop sign at the end of our block on the 25th in Washington, a black ass nigga with a jerry curl dripping wet ran up to his car window. Our windows was down. It's the summer, we cruising, having a big brother, little sister moment when Jerry Curl put a gun to my brother's head and said something, nigga, I'll blow your motherfucking head off. Do you know how scared I was as a kid and girl? I was trying to think quick on my feet because my brother started bawling up his lips, getting mad. His hands started to move because I knew he wasn't going to be no punk in front of his little sister. But all I could think of was brains and blood all over me and losing my brother in front of me. So I gently turned my head to them while in front. 
while in front seat beside my bro. Please, sir, don't shoot my brother. And brother, please don't say anything. Please, please, please. The rest of my body was stiff and I was taking deep breaths. Jerry Curl said, yeah, nigga, you better not have moved. Then he took the gun away from his head and walked away. Didn't see where he went. Just looked straight ahead, sat for a second. My brother was pissed. Cheeks puffing. I said, it's okay, brother. I think he just, the sound, I think just the sound of kid's voice to the man and my brother, I don't know. And my voice to my brother altered the situation to a different route because I don't think Jerry Curl knew I was in front seat. I was a little, I was so little and skinny. I didn't know what gangs and colors were about then. I was just happy to see my brother. We drove off to get back to a regular day, but I'll never forget it. She said something about you can't explode, uh, exploit children. You sure can. His old ass probably dead by now. Boy, y'all was nationwide too. I bet y'all was the shit at school though. <laughs> Had to say this page is so fire. I was strolling through the comments and saw that there were people commenting that were actually in this video. This is dope. Shout out to y'all, Lil Rock. Love from Arizona. And someone said, how is that man telling them to put their guns down when they get it from them? I'm talking about the violence we see every day on TV. We hear it on the radio. It's in the newspaper. It's even part of our cinema. Yes, Hollywood loves to show and play violence type of movies, even in the comic books. Same for cartoons too. We get this from our white counterparts. This is how most white people solve their problems by using violence against another human being. They made us like this. This is their nature. Violence can't solve everything. So they need to examine that question. Why people, why black people are so violent as a people, they need to look in the mirror first. Then they need to re-examine themselves with them as people. It's all about destruction, oppression, take our land, run you off your land, kill off your people, rape their women, brutalize their people. Yeah, oh, wow, this dude did a whole dang. What the hell? That's a long ass comment. These were some of my little homies from the hood back in the day when I was addicted. Thank God I've been saved by grace. This brings back so many memories. There are so many things I would have done different if I knew then what I know now. But for everything, we, those of us that were still here, have gone through. I give God the glory for saving us and giving us another chance for those of is us that have gone home to glory. May you rest in peace. Someone said, 20th and Valentine, I saw so much shit on my block. So many lives lost. <laughs> Someone said the woman wasn't naked back in then and back in then. <laughs> Someone said, now this is what I mean by I'm glad we didn't, I'm glad we did our dirt and dumbness when everybody didn't have a camera. Woo, we used to dress like that. <laughs> There's so many comments on here, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Yo. Someone tag, someone tag somebody was that. Is that your mama at the beginning dancing? <laughs> so I said, yo, you know I'm getting my lick back for this one. And I'm finna tag my mama. <laughs> so somebody tag, somebody tag one of these girls. Son, like, yo, mama, this your mama, yo. <laughs> Someone said, sad part is, it's a few blocks from my grandmother's house, and I know several of the people in the video. It gives me nightmares of the stupidity of that stuff. Shout out to MC8 <laughs> in the documentary. The music, anyway. <laughs> 
somebody else tag somebody like, I know damn well that ain't your mama, bruh. <laughs> so these girls' kids getting tagged in it. Kids tonight need to watch this. <laughs> they keep talking about how they was hitting that quan. <laughs> and also, you got to think, it wasn't, you know, we didn't have cell phones and, and social media and stuff back then. So when this came out, if you had access to it, if you had it on tape, you watched it all the time. Shoot, I know me and my brothers, we had this documentary memorized. <laughs> Someone said, big Big ups to the man for having the boss to come to the hood to try to make changes in person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> people tagging these people. So, yeah, this is the girl. She was in the documentary. She got tagged. Somebody tagged her. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is one of the girls that was in this clip, too. I could tell she the... Uh, she looked like this one right here. Okay, so she she posted a long... Okay, hold on, y'all. Let me read all of this. <laughs> she said a lot of shit that I can't even read, for real. <laughs> she tried... We didn't, and it's not cute no more when your personal life... But you got to know how to... I can't maintain it personally. What? She wrote a lot that I can't even read it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Somebody tag people tagging their uncle who they see in here, uncles, cousins, aunties. So someone says, I remember watching this as a kid and still think this was the lame shit ever stage. Someone in a documentary, Marvin Weathersby, he says it wasn't staged. Wasn't staged, homie. <laughs> so as far as Marvin Weathersby, he says, I don't know about everyone else, but I'm chilling and working my ass off. So he on some grown man minding his business. He's just working and doing what he needs to do. So LaJoy, I had inboxed her. And, um, I, you know, it made me feel some kind of way that I knew <laughs> that these people really used them and pretty much took advantage of the children, the minors that was in this documentary. So she says, you know, oh my God, I'm just not seeing your messages. Thank, thank you so much for your help and expertise. Yes, he paid Sunny Boy and Ugly Man. Because they was told they was old enough to not get ripped off. I'm pretty sure he paid Crip Mo too. All my girls was told we was going to get paid. They are all witnesses. Mm, I have to find out the rest of the stuff I've inquired about. Me and my sister tried when we was 18 years old and talked about our attorney. And I guess she did not know what she was talking about. I had a few people boxing me to be our manager and some and do an interview, but everybody be too busy with their life. So no one has actually done it yet, but I will look into it. Thank you. So yeah, I had showed her, you know, I was using this page to promote my music. So I was letting her hear my music and my beats or whatever. And she said, um, Okay, girl. Okay, yes, thank you. If I get to a dead end, I will let you know, and I will look up your site. She said, girl, you the shit. I like your shit. You the real deal. That's what's up. It's nice to meet you. Maybe we can meet with me and my sister. She was beside me on the bank in a little rock. My sister rapped, too. She said, I just broke up with my ex today but he wrote the rap song and is part a part of a group connected writers called down in the dirty we rolling that made it to the hollywood back in the days she said i wish you could hear her cd she has songs harder than those 
I'm I'm gonna call her now. She told me two days ago that a guy she used to do shows for. Well, we did because I was her back <laughs> background dancer. He got a major deal in Vegas. He tried to fly her down, but she started rapping when Too Short, the rapper, dared her years ago. She used to kick it at his house in Atlanta, but I'm finna hit her up now. So this is the girl's sister. I have to look up some of her music since she said, you know, Too Short, Too Short dared her to start rapping and whatnot. I'm gonna play a little clip of her song. She was in a documentary. One nigga don't stop, no show. One nigga don't stop my flow. Yeah, nigga, your time is up, motherfucker. So you know what you need to do? You a proud nigga and your hustle proud. So nigga, fuck you and get the fuck out. This shit that I spit so sick I need a doctor. 911 real quick, helicopter. I fucking need a doctor. I don't want to play too much, but yeah, we was talking, we was chopping it up in the inbox and we was talking, I was like, man, I need to get her on some beats and whatnot, but you know, they, they grown with kids. She working at the post office, you know, the other girl, she coaching basketball and all kinds of stuff. So I just hope that they get the justice that they deserve. Even all these years later, man, how many years later? going going on 30 years now it's going on 30 years since this documentary came out so who knows maybe if you guys like comment share the video and we get this information in um as many people's hands as possible or show it to as many people as possible it might you know Get the attention of HBO and the people who should have been paying these kids or, you know, because this is before reality TV was really, really popping. Like HBO was the place for kind of reality TV, but it was like documentaries. So I don't know. Maybe this was before, you know, the release paper and all that kind of stuff, because you got to sign something. Um, for them to um, be allowed to show your face, especially minors. Um, maybe they felt like, hey, they in the hood. They probably ain't going to see this. It don't matter. We can just get them chicken and pizza and yada, yada. But this is my commentary on Bacon and Little Rock. Uh, where are they now? As much as I can pull up, I'll pull it up. Um, and if I get any more additional information about it, I will make a part two until next time, you know, make sure you subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell and all that good stuff, because I am going to be deleting the documentary off my YouTube because it's getting demonetized. I can't have it. So until next time, you guys, this is the daily throwback classic show hosted by Zinnia Rain. And keep it real. <laughs>